Vice President Kamala Harris moments ago in Battleground, Wisconsin, with the former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney asking Americans to put patriotism ahead of partisanship. If people across Wisconsin and our nation are willing to do what Liz is doing, to stand up for the rule of law, for our democratic ideals, and the Constitution of the United States, then together I know we can chart a new way forward, not as members of any one party, but as Americans. All right, they're appearing in a, a, a red county, a county that voted by, what, 25, 26 points for, Her uh, for Trump both times. But it is a state, Wisconsin, that Harris has been gaining ground in, according to an updated analysis from the Cook Political Report. In fact, the majority of the seven must-win states show Vice President Kamala Harris with a slight edge. Now, we had seen that. There had been sort of a trend back to Trump and some polling, and now back to uh, where that trend had been. I want to bring in Amy Walter, publisher and editor-in-chief of the Cook Political Report, with Amy Walter. So, Amy, let's talk about this. New analysis, when you're going through these seven, these seven states, and everything comes down to these, uh, in, in almost every case, you show Harris with a slight edge. So what does her path to victory look like from what you're seeing now? Yeah, so this is polling that we've done in conjunction with two uh, good polling firms, one a Democratic firm, BSG, and another Republican firm, GS Strategy. They went into the field in uh, mid-September looking at what voters are uh, feeling, not just about the head-to-head -head race, whether they're going to vote for Trump, whether they're going to vote for Harris, but some underlying issues. What are the issues that are motivating these voters? Who do they see as better able to handle those issues? And what we noticed on the head-to-head -head numbers, Aaron, there wasn't much movement between August and now. Uh, just very slightly on the edge, a point or two, uh, not even a point or two, just basically a point one way or the other. So the race is pretty steady. Yeah. But underneath it, as you pointed out, there has been some significant shift, specifically in the way that voters now see Harris's ability to handle the issue of inflation. Back in August, uh, hmm. Trump had a six-point advantage with those battleground state voters on that question. Today, they're even on that question. Even on immigration, an issue where Trump still has an advantage, it's now down to nine points from 14 points earlier in August. And so I think that, you know, for yeah. Harris, that's some pretty good news here, is that on those issues where Trump's strongest, she's seen some movement. The challenge for Harris, though, still remains that when you look at undecided voters or those people who are softly leaning uh, into maybe a third party candidate, their number one concern is the economy, is inflation, and they do give Trump an advantage on that issue. The reason they're not voting for Donald Trump right now, they really don't like him, the way he behaves or the, uh, you know, a lot about yeah. him as personal. Uh, is what's keeping them right now from pulling the lever. Yeah, it was very interesting. You know, there are those who had said, you know, that there are many other Republican candidates uh, who this race might look very different if they were at the top of the ticket. Uh, but, but this is the ticket that the Republicans have. According to your analysis, Amy, you know, you're going through those states and showing showing Harris with that, you know, slight edge in almost every one of them, except for in Georgia. I was curious about that, looking at your analysis, uh, which had flipped uh, from where the candidates were in May. But he, but he still has that 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 slight advantage. What stands out about Trump? Yeah. Well, listen, as you know, this is a very, very uh, competitive state that Biden carried by only 11,000 votes last time. And the real key here is going to be turnout among black voters and whether what we're seeing in the polls right now, which is that Donald Trump is getting a bigger share of the African-American vote than he did in uh, 2020, whether that's going to be able to hold those voters. Are they going to show up and vote? for Donald Trump, then that makes Harris's path very, very perilous. Mm. All right. Amy, thank you very much. Fresh off his vice presidential debate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz was in Redding, Pennsylvania, stopping at a Puerto Rican-owned restaurant to boost support among the city's majority Latino population. This thing's going to come down to our blue wall states, come down to Pennsylvania, 
might come right through this restaurant. At the same time, just four blocks away, the Trump campaign was holding its own phone bank, specifically targeting Latinos in the Lehigh Valley. Por qué está apoyando President Trump? Primero, what are the three reasons you are supporting oh, President okay. Trump? Tres razones: eh, la familia, family, la vida, Life. y el fin de la guerra. An end of war. The dueling outreach, just the latest sign both campaigns understand the importance of Latino voters in the Keystone State. In 2020, President Joe Biden beat former President Donald Trump in Pennsylvania by about 80,000 votes. But with this race still extremely tight, the estimated 615,000 eligible Latino voters here could easily help decide the November outcome. While recent national polls show Harris doing better than Biden was with Latino voters, they also show Trump outperforming past Republicans among this group, which in recent elections has solidly backed Democrats. At a Harris campaign event this week in Allentown, another deeply Latino city, there were plenty of voters excited about the vice president. This man told me he feels Harris represents hope and will help small businesses. But there were warning signs, too. Vas a votar, no? Sí. No vas a quedar en tu casa. You're not going to stay home. You're going to vote. No, jamás. Voy a votar. Pero al día de hoy no he tomado una decisión por cuál de los dos voy a votar. Today you have not made a decision who no. you're going to vote for. I think we have too many people that are kind of like on shaky waters. They don't know where they stand. To energize this community in Pennsylvania, the Harris campaign is turning to volunteers like Yamelisa Taveras, the campaign featuring the Allentown small business owner and mom in a new ad focused on health care this week. I believe we have a great shot with Harris Walls. However, uh, the campaign can do more. There's still so many people on the fence. And, and having those conversations and knowing that there truly are a lot of people that can benefit from so much more information. For their part, the Trump campaign is turning to men like Daniel Campo. The Venezuelan-born pilot recently spoke at a Trump rally in northeastern Pennsylvania. But Campo said his biggest challenge when canvassing Latino neighborhoods are people who feel the former president is prejudiced against Latinos. How do you convince them to vote for him? So are you going to invite him to your wedding? Are you going to invite him to your birthday party or your kid's birthday party? You have somebody that did the job and did a good job, and you're hiring him again for that job. You're not inviting him to your wedding. Danny Freeman, CNN, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Joining us now is Abel Maldonado, a former, uh, excuse me, a Republican former lieutenant governor of California, and Anna Navarro, a Republican strategist voting for Kamala Harris. Um, and I mean, you heard what in Danny's piece, uh, the, the last voter said he's, he's voting for President Trump, and he said his pitch to other uh, voters is, you know, you're not inviting him to your kid's birthday party. It's a similar to an argument of, you know, we're not asking him to be the pastor in chief. He's the president. Um, what do you make of that argument? Well, I, I translate that to he's a jerk. But look, look past the fact that he is a jerk. You wouldn't invite him to your wedding because you don't like him. You don't have to like him. We used to like our presidential candidates. It was, you know, they used to, there used to be a test. Somebody you'd like to have a beer with. Uh, well, Trump doesn't drink, so that's a problem <laughs> right there. But look, I think what you are seeing with Latinos, Anderson, is, and I'm, and I'm sure Abel would say this to you, because in both our families, there is friction and there is division as to Trump and, and Harris. Latinos are all over the place when it comes to issues. And when we say you cannot paint the Latino vo vote with one broad stroke, sure. that's absolutely true. There are progressive Latinos, there are conservative Latinos, there are Latinos who are pro-choice, there are Latinos who are pro-life. I have found there is one thing that all Latinos want. They want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to be acknowledged, they want to be sitting at the table, they want to be reached out to, they want to be part of the conversation, they want folks to come out and earn their support and their vote. Lieutenant Kevin, what do you make of the argument that that man was, the pitch he was making to other uh, voters to vote for Trump, which is, well, you would, it's not, maybe he's not the guy you want to invite to your children's party or, uh, I mean, that's not a great argument, is it? Like, well, I mean, like Anna just stated, what, what she feels that Latinos want. Latinos also want to be able to feed their family. They want to be able to make their home home payment, their rent. They want to be able to pay for their insurance for their vehicles. And times have been tough. And Anderson, I think Latinos, for the first time in their history, they're going to be able to to, to vote. And they've seen both. 
both economies. They've lived under the Trump economy, and they've lived under the Kamala Harris economy. And for them, it's become an easy vote from the standpoint of, you know what? I lived better under Donald J. Trump. So I could afford, and at the end of the week, I had a little extra money to take my family to get an ice cream on Saturday or even maybe a dinner, which Latinos like to do. And uh, I think this is boiling down to all economics. And then you add the border. Uh, the border has been wide open lately. We know that. And uh, people want to be safe. Latinos want to be safe. When they put that deadbolt at home at night, they want to be safe at home. So that's the allure that they have. And I really believe, and when I see these numbers, Anderson, of 48% for Donald J. Trump, those are staggering numbers. Why? They don't see him as a politician.